What's up guys, this is Chronic Rush and welcome to episode 91 of my 5th 14 Road Gold Around the World series. Welcome back guys, and obviously we're continuing on with the Celia B squad. If you didn't go and check out last episode, go check it out. Kind of had a surprise victory, didn't do too well in terms of games. Fairly tight, tight scoreline and some fairly solid teams, but um, didn't do too bad. Teams working fairly well. Also made a change last episode, changed it to the 3-5-2, which um, feels a lot more stronger at defensively. Um, that's probably where I was losing it a bit in terms of, um, I always felt I was short at the back, especially if you've got a centre-back that just wants to charge up forward. You're always very, very loose at the back. So, for changing to the 3-5-2 if the two CDMs was going to help it, and it actually did. But a uh, very, very nice day, and hopefully we can have a very, very nice commentary and episode for you guys. Uh, but uh, EA, you need to go and sort your fucking game out, basically, because the transfer market does not work. Um, it's impossible to find anything. It is completely balls up. Completely balls. Um, so uh, that shit needs to be searched. And sometimes it's just impossible for me to even get on Ultimate Team. But uh, that shit's not going to stop me from doing an episode, guys. So we're going to continue on. Um, as you can see there, I'm just trying to pick up some contract cards. Um, I'm not too sure. I think a couple of players are out of contract. And I stupidly didn't have any saved into my club. So uh, it was taking me some time to eventually find some. To eventually buy them and eventually put them onto my players. And also, EA have still got that stupid thing on when you bid for a thing. Um, when you end up winning, it takes for about 24 hours. Something ridiculous to end up winning the bid and be able to use it as like a consumable. Or actually use the player in the team or anything. It just seems to stay there in the transfer list or whatever you want to call it. So, EA, you need to get your act together. But um, eventually, we end up picking a couple of contract cards up. It's going to apply it on to, I believe it was two of our centre backs as well as a player further down in the midfield, uh, striker Hernandez. We also need a fitness card for, I think it was Stefan Haunvic, the right mid. Um, um, I'm not too sure how much they were going for, but as you can see there again, disconnecting from the stupid transfer market, which um, is the most, like, this thing's not too bad. It's when you're trying to build a team and you don't know, like, the maximum and minimum, like, the minimum price you should play for the players because um, you just end up just randomly buying the minimum price you see for about 10 pages because, uh, some like, I find building, you search for the player, that shit never works. You have to, like, filter through, getting all the filters correct for the player like you have to do in FIFA 13. Then... If you go to put a buy now on any card, it just does not come up. You put like a ridiculous 100k buy now for something like Glenn Johnson, it just doesn't come up. But um, we're going to be moving into the game to get that stupid topic off my head. And um, as you can see there, I do end up putting that back on there, but he brings it back for a penalty. Which, um, you know, it was a penalty. Well, you could argue he takes out my legs, I think it is here, where I pass it into the player there. And um, I get brought down for a penalty. Ragoni's going to go and put on this. I believe he's got the best penalty. He's got fairly, very solid penalties indeed. That centre mid. Fairly solid player overall. And that's going to make it 1-0 in the fourth minute. Great start indeed. Picking up that early goal like I always stressed about, guys. Definitely try and aim for that. Keep possession until we find the right chance and just try and go for that early goal there. He goes and dinks that across. Fairly annoying. Adebayor got that touch perfectly. I think if he didn't get it so right, my keeper may have got there in time or my player may have tackled him. But uh, that made it 1-1. Look at that ball from my player there into the path of Pasqueto. And look at that finish. Pasqueto, another fantastic player, guys. I would definitely recommend picking him up. And uh, he doesn't go for too much either. So great, great player indeed. Um, him and Dybala, definitely recommend indeed. That made it 2-1. Dybala, the man I was just talking about in the 61st minute, found a lovely ball into Hernandez. And uh, I'm going to try and get this dink back. And I believe that was Pasqueto again. Right place, right time. Beautiful headed touch into the back on there. Let's go and make that 3-1 here. He then goes and kicks, I believe that is out for a goal kick. And uh, Sorrento here goes and passes it straight into the path of Sterling. And uh, he's just going to crab that across into Adebayo to go make that 3-2 in the 73rd minute. And um, guys, that is the only problem with fucking three at the back. Do not try passing it out. Move into the 90th minute here. And my God. From a mistake from my back four, not being able to pass it. He then goes and capitalizes with Adebayo for a fucking stupid cross. And ends up winning that game. He did have double, like, loads more possession than me. Um, but um, it was just fairly frustrating how two stupid passes led to him getting a, um, a put. Well, led to me only getting a point. But uh, that's a draw. No, one win, one draw, three losses, five games left. So um, not looking too good. I'm not going to lie. Um, the squad, probably okay. Maybe the formation. If you're going to look for some of these players, I'd definitely recommend the top three. They're fairly solid. Ragoni in the middle as well. He's fairly solid. If you're going to copy the squad, completely alter the back three 
try and change it to a back four. The only reason I couldn't do a back four was because I wasn't liking any of the right back or left backs. I don't even think there was a left back or something off the top of my head, but um, that was the only reason. And um, the three at the back just doesn't seem to be working um, in this game. 3 5 2, FIFA 13, that shit was beast. Um, this FIFA, not too good. But if we go into the seventh minute here, brand new game against another BPL squad. These squads are consistently popular. You never, never not come up against one of these, and uh, they're fairly solid as well. But look at that ball from Dybala, and look at that finish from Pascal Waito. What a fantastic rocket top right shot. I am pretty happy with that goal, and guys, you're going to see a freaking replay of that, because that was an absolute beaut. Look at this, from a through ball from Dybala into the path of Pascal Waito. Boom, top right, absolutely fabulous indeed. Um, I was pretty happy about that goal, so that made it 1-0 there. Um, ball gets headed out here, and um, we end up... Uh, just kicking it straight back out, and he's going to have possession outside of the penalty box. Ashley Cole with a very, very nice ball into Jesus Navas. Lovely touch, and he's going to dink that across into, I believe, that path of Andy Carroll. Um, unfortunately, my centre-back does get out jump there from, from the monster himself, Andy Carroll. Absolute aerial threat, I'm not going to lie. Um, but um, that made it 1-1, and uh, we get kind of unlucky there. A couple of rebounded touches. Um, and it falls into the path of his player, Thomas Huddleston. Lovely tackle from a player. Um, okay. Okay. I was expecting my keeper just to blast it out, but Bakary Sanya is going to get in there like a stupid whip and um, end up putting that in the back of the net there, um, speeding down. And uh, he's going to go and make it 3-1 there. I believe that was going to be with Willian. Since when does he win ahead? He's probably one of the smallest players in the fucking world and ends up winning ahead of back post, um, which was kind of frustrating. But that made it 3-2. Del Alessandro here gets fairly lucky for somehow that ball stays to his fucking feet. God knows, lovely finish nevertheless to go and make that 3-2 in the 73rd minute. And um, we end up losing it by one goal again. That's going to be far, no, four losses now. So um, only got four points. Not too many sure how many points we actually need. But we need to step up to the A game with this Celia B squad. Which uh, kind of doesn't, defeats the point of the even calling the Celia B. Because um, we're probably most likely definitely going to get relegated. Which is extremely frustrating. Um, because obviously I'll, the main aim is Division 1. Everyone wants the Division 1. Um, I think we're currently in Division 3, possibly, maybe even... Um, I think it's Division 3. Um, don't quote me on that one, because I'm not too sure if that's on my head. But uh, as you can see, we come against a Bundesliga squad. Finally, a different squad for this episode. Um, Bundesliga, again, just as cheap, just as beast. So, uh, quite a few newbie players use these teams, but I'm not going to lie. It's always nice variation it up. That's why I love this series. Um, and... Uh, Time for luck to swap. Steva Horvich here gets very lucky for a rebound from his keeper off his play to go into the back of the net. And I'm not going to complain. I'm going to go and take that goal any day of the week. That made it 1-0. He then goes and makes it 1-1 with Mandzukic in the ninth minute there with a header. Um, a fairly standard goal from Mario Mandzukic. You expect him to be there uh, to win those headers, especially against Silver centre-backs there. Um, we're going to pick up this ball here. Santa Claus here, unfortunately gets a lucky bad touch, falls into the path of Marco Royce, who storms into the box here. A lovely, lovely tackle from a player to get in the interception, but just don't close him down. And Kevin Prince, by the way, is going to put that around the keeper. Uh, fairly solid finish to make it 2-1 there in the 22nd minute. Uh, we move on to the 28th minute. As you can see here, we're severely stretched. Shakiri's going to whip that ball in. I believe Marco Royce is going to win that header there. Again, fairly frustrating to lose a header to Marco Royce. Not the tallest of players, not the most aerial threat of players um, to come up against, but um, ends up beating my silver centre-back there to go and make that 3-1. Marco Royce again, absolute pacing around my centre-mid, um, and uh, somehow we end up winning possession there. He somehow gets that bag, um, ends up mugging my player off completely, uh, crosses that in into the path of Mandzukic, and um, uh, I'm not even going to go and try and commentate that. Gundogan goes and puts him back on the net. Um, so uh, this wasn't looking too good with this squad, and by this time, I was just trying to end it as fast as I possibly can. I think that's going to make it 5-1 maybe with Shakiri there. Um, but um, not doing too well with the squad. I believe we are now going to be relegated. Not too short off the... No, we've got a couple of games remaining, so it's still possible. But guys, make sure you stay tuned to the next episode to see the end verdict of the Celia B. Also, if you like, so then click that like button. Also, subscribe. Stay tuned to this series and any feedback in the comments would be much appreciated, guys. This has been Corrish. Till next time, adios.